Welcome, everybody. This is John Paul Mendoza, Dr. Speed Selling. This is The Raging Verbalist, and we are live on Facebook all around the, the world, I guess. And uh, Raging Verbalist is every weekday, every weekday, every Friday of every week from 8 a.m. to approximately 8.40 and uh, pick a topic of the day. Uh, it is always around uh, some important topic that we're going to cover. And uh, today is no exception. Let me do a quick introduction and then I'll get to the, you know, what we're going to go through today. Um, and of course, for those of you who are not aware, I am the, the uh, co-author of uh, the book that's coming out very soon, which is most businesses fail in the first five minutes. It just takes them three to five years to realize it, position to win. With me today is, the, is Sandra, the lovely Sandra with all the questions. By the way, if you have questions, make sure you submit them and send them in and uh, we'll see if we can get to them if not we'll uh, we'll pull them up and get to them at another time now as all of you should know by now there is this contagion that's going on around the globe and it is absorbing lots of energy and absorbing lots of time and people are all excited about it uh it's called a coronavirus it is actually you know now known as the covid 19 uh, 19, of course, for being last year when it was discovered, and it has lots of consequences, and that's what we're going to be talking about today and how it affects you, how it affects your business, and how it affects what's going on out there. A couple of interesting little tidbits that I heard is that uh, it has now crossed the threshold of 100,000 cases on, on this planet. Now, we don't know how far it's going to go. As of yesterday, it had hit 79 countries and growing and moving farther along. Also, uh, I feel sorry for, you want to talk about a marketing disaster. I feel really sorry for these people, but the, the Corona beer people have gotten the stuffing kicked out of them just because of the fact that they're, they're named Corona and they have nothing to do with the virus, but apparently, you know, the ability to discern between these two things is very difficult. Also, we have lots of interesting things going on. Uh, I was at the Costco yesterday, went to go buy some water. They were out of water as if the taps around the world were not going to work. I, I was just there to buy a case of water. Uh, oh, they were out of paper towels. They were out of masks. They were out of uh, you know, Purell you know, hand sanitizer. So we have that going on. Now that's the stage that we're off of. And then we have a bunch of, of questions that we have. And what I'm gonna do is have uh, Sandra kick us off and, and we'll go through this. And the intent here is not to be an amplifier, right? I mean, lots of what's going on is people amplifying this thing, but really to kind of discuss it in calm, direct terms and see how you can make sure that your business doesn't go down the tubes like Corona Beer is doing right now. So with that, Sandra, what is, what's our first question? What are we gonna kick this off with? All right, is COVID-19 real or not? So. You know, I, I thought a lot about this question before we get kicked off today, you know, just just so you know, I mean, we, you know, we actually have these questions figured out ahead of time. We're not just randomly ans asking questions. So I want to start off with this. And that's a great question. So COVID-19 is real and it's real because it is affecting people and it has a mortality rate that that is taking place. You know, people who didn't necessarily think that they were going to catch something, catch it, and then, you know, bang. Now, it is real in that sense. And anytime there is a perception, so this is something that you can get from, you know, get from the book, right? Which is perception is reality. And we have lots of people who have a perception. That's the problem with Corona beer is there's a perception that the two are linked some way or somehow. But is the virus real? Yes, it's real. How far will it go? Well, we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail. But what you really need to do is start thinking about how you're going to take care of yourself and more importantly, not get into a state of panic. Because if you get into a state of panic, well, that's not a good idea. And we'll be talking about that in just a little bit. So is it real? Yes. Will it affect you? I'm going to say, you know, keep yourself uh, as healthy as possible. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Uh, I learned a very valuable lesson yesterday because uh, I was just kind of flipping through, uh, you know, some things. And, and it says, anytime you touch your face, 
you increase the chance of infection and, and moving things forward. Uh, we are primates. And just like, uh, you know, just like other primates, like chimpanzees and gorillas, we, we touch our face all the time. And you just have to make sure that you start breaking yourself a little bit of that habit. Uh, and, you know, think about hygiene. And if you do that, things will be better. Uh, and also, uh, you'll, you'll see what takes place there. So that's where we, that's where we kick off. Uh, what is the next question? Will COVID-19 dramatically affect my business? So what you have to ask yourself is, is, is your business reliant upon, you know, people not being in this, this kind of crazy state so they stop doing things? The, the worst thing that can happen in any of these kinds of situations is that, is that we stop actually living our lives. Now, having seen these types of things happen before, what I can tell you is, is that, is that now, in fact, maybe let's step back. What has made this thing even more alarming, more exasper exasperated is the fact that we now have social media. So now it's being spun around the world. Everything is going on. You have people coming up with all kinds of crazy ideas about this. And because of it, it now puts this kind of cloud out of what's going on. My suggestion is that you devise your own understanding of how you're going to say your message to your customers and make sure that your customers know that you're still open for business. And if you don't do that, what will happen is, is that, so in other words, you can't ignore it. If you don't do that, what you're going to find out is that you are going to have your business dramatically affected and it, and it should not. Also, you need to think about if you have employees, if you're going to have a travel policy, what that's going to look like. And, and all of that, I can tell you that we have, I have a client and uh, he told me yesterday, works for a really big company. We'll, we'll leave their name out, but a multi-billion dollar company. And they just issued a travel advisory in which they say, listen, unless it is mission critical travel, uh, all travel is now postponed until this thing sorts itself out. Uh, glad I don't own any, any airline stocks. Uh, it's going to affect a lot of different uh, different businesses in that regard. So if you're in anything that deals with transportation or people traveling, it's going to be a problem. Also, some of the newer ideas and concepts. So, I mean, hotels have weathered lots of storms. My guess is that all these people who are counting on their Airbnbs being packed and stacked and all done, uh, they may in fact see a big impact because they're much more of the marginal players in the marketplace. This is why I always suggest to every single business, especially since I've done so many turnarounds, is that you need to have a defensible position. You have to have something, a place that you can work from, and you should be able to make it through and not have it terribly adversely affect your business. Final point about how it affects your business is that whether you believe in it or not is irrelevant. It's what the marketplace believes. And let's let's be very blunt. If people aren't drinking Corona beer because it has a similar sound, then you got to know that, that there's a lot less rationality than we'd like to believe. What's the next question, Sandra? All right. Uh, why are we in a state of panic? So as you go out and look at your fellow you know, inhabitants, I don't know what we want to call them <laughs> on this planet, is that there is a, a lot of research that has been done over the years, over the decades, over a course of time. And what they did is they've, they've in fact looked at, you know, so what causes these types of things? And one of the interesting things is that somebody about 70, 80 years ago, started studying people who were drowning. Now, if somebody is drowning, and that's bad, right? I mean, because we're not, you know, we don't have gills, we, we need oxygen. So if somebody is in that state, what would happen is that lifeguards would mobilize, jump in the water, go out there, swim out there, you know, past whatever obstacle they need to do, get out there to see if they can help this person because this person is clearly in a state of panic. It has just blown them up. And what they would find out or what they found out 
is that the people who are trying to rescue the people who are drowning would in fact be drowned themselves because the drowning victim, the drowning uh, person would just grab onto them and shove them underneath the water with, with incredible intensity. Now, that's like hardwired inside of us. So when we start feeling this sense of disease, when we start feeling this challenge that's going on, what happens is that we have this tendency to have this irrational fear. Now, just because I say that, just because I've exemplified and showed what, you know, well, okay, nothing to really worry about does not mean that people won't worry, does not mean that people won't watch Twitter, won't watch, uh, you know, cable TV, listen to, you know, podcasts, radios, whatever, and get and get this sense that it's all just crazy out there, especially with the changes that are going on. Now, why are we more rapidly changing than ever before? Well, it's because communications is significantly faster. So that deluge of information is hitting us more rapidly than ever. And that has a tendency to do what is called amplification. We know amplification because of, you know, if you listen into, you know, your tunes and you, and you crank up the, the volume, that's amplification. The other side of it is called attenuation. And if you're looking at a, a signal, and by the way, this is a signal, right? Every day that you're getting more input, these are signals, bang, bang, bang. And what it does is it feeds into this fear factor. And this isn't like some reality TV show where we can laugh and say, oh, look, they just, you know, poured ants all over this guy's head. And, oh, yeah. No, but there, there's this real fear factor that humans have. And that's where panic comes from. And the question I have is, can you gather up your strength? Can you gather up your insights and not be that person who panics in the middle of, which is a, this crisis? Now, because of this change, by the way, I have a trip that's coming up in just a few weeks that you know, go to the East Coast. Now, I don't even know if that trip's going to take place, primarily because, you know, will the people I'm going to, or I'm supposed to go see, will they actually want me to see them that way? The other thing is that is that uh, I just saw uh, this morning where they were talking about how there are many companies who are being much more flexible and using technology, just like we're using technology right now to deliver this, you know, Facebook Live to you. This is, uh, you know, interesting times for this kind of technology. Now, I think that what this does is that this actually helps force what's called the, uh, you know, adoption curve and pushes some things forward because it says, you know, my phobia about technology, which is part of what stops this stuff from getting adopted faster. It's not just a phobia, but it's like a, a resistance to learning, a resistance to getting it put in place. Well, that starts to dissolve when you say, well, look, if I learn how to do this, then maybe I won't get the, you know, the big bad bug and have that happen. So we'll see what, what happens. We, we have to make sure, though, that, that we always try to maintain a non-panic state. Whenever you exhibit panic, whenever you get that sense, that irrational sense is in all likelihood, you're probably gonna be like that drowning person in which you will grab at any straw, you will do anything. But what it is, is that is we're not, we're not in the middle of the ocean. Now, having said that, when you look at the, the number of people who are uh, now getting uh, infected and then actually having a complication which ends up in well, let's be blunt, you know, death, most, if not all of those people are compromised in some way. So if you have any compromise whatsoever, now you need to think about what you need to do um, and make sure that you have figured out that if you're in a compromised state, maybe you do need to self-isolate. Maybe you do need to use technology. But the real key is understanding what your circumstance or situation is and what you should or shouldn't do. The other thing is, and this is an, this is an opinion. My opinion is, is do not rush to, you know, the doctor, do not rush to the hospital, do not rush those places while this is going on, unless you really have something pretty serious. If you don't have something serious, and I'm not saying ignore it, I'm just saying, take care of it to the best of your ability and do those things that you should be doing all along. And this very hectic day and age, 
it, it's amazing how many times I talk to people who say, well, I'm sick, but I'm sitting at my desk or I'm sick, but I'm working on my computer or I'm sick, but I'm doing, well, you know, how about this thing called rest? You know, it doesn't cost you money. It actually is something where, you know, if, if you want to know who figures this out without any trouble as I have, we have dogs and dogs figure out if they're not feeling well, they take a nap. Human beings are trying to tough it out and show how we can overcome it. So maybe it's time to take a little bit of a hint from them. So do that and see if you can eliminate how much panic you get into. All right, what do we have next? I'm gonna skip back to an online question we got. Okay. Um, would it be a good idea uh, to buy stock in airlines now that their shares have gone down? Well, there, there's a interesting question, and and so anybody out there who's listening, who's you know with the SEC, which is the Securities Exchange Commission, I'm not a licensed, I, I you know I, I I don't really give stock advice, but here's what I'd say: there there is a theory that is called as things are going down, it's probably not a bad idea to buy some things. However, you're you're catching what is called a falling knife, and a falling knife is hard to catch. Now, I have to say that I have purchased things that I think look cheap, uh, but make sure that, that you understand that, that as low as something goes, it can always go lower. We're not through this. We don't, we're, not, we're in the middle of it. Watch it carefully, but think long and hard about whether or not you, uh, so maybe this is a better way to, to answer that. Do you think that they're going to be worth more money six months or a year or two or three years down the road? And if you do, then you can buy that. Uh, yesterday, I happened to have lunch with one of the top investment newsletter writers. And uh, you know what he is doing right now is he's watching, but whatever he buys, he puts in a stop loss. For those who don't know what that is, you need to go get a little education about it. But he, he is right now watching this carefully because there's high, high volatility. So if you're going to buy that, if you're going to look at that, be careful of, of what you do. And, and always remember catching a falling knife is hard to do. Also, if you if you are a mind to, uh, then then be, be careful and uh, don't bet the farm all on one thing. Hopefully that helps you. Okay. What is our what is our next question? That yeah. was a good one, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I mean, and by and, and and let me let me just say this other thing, which is which is so when you see things like um oil hitting, you know, how many month flow when you see these things taking place, uh, you know, I, I start to, I start to become interested because yeah, you know, yes, you want to, you want to buy low and sell high. You'd be amazed at how many people panic sell. And when they panic sell, they, they, they lose lots of money. All right. Next question. Uh, what does COVID-19 reveal about human nature? So this is really the first full blown, and we can call it a pandemic if we want to, um, for right now. And you, and and pandemic is a scary thing. Uh, for, first off, is that l l let's give it a little context. The Black Plague, which struck this earth, you know, fourteen hundreds, you know, or over thirteen hundreds. Uh, lost like a third of the population. So 150 million people, sadly, you know, it's, it's succumbed to it. You know, we're not going to see anything near that. But what it what this reveals about human nature is no matter how many trappings we have of superiority and technology and feel like we're on top of it and, you know, we're there and we, we're good, no matter how many of those things that we have, the reality is very blunt. <laughs> The reality is, is that is that we still have inside of us that concern that, you know what, we're out of control of this thing. Now we are out of control and part of the efforts of governments and the World Health Organization and other institutions is to attempt to get some level of control. There is no way to stop it. This is not like a movie where, you know, 
somebody rushes in with the serum and says, I've got the serum and we're all good and everybody's going to be fixed and everything. It's going to take time. I, I, I smile, you know, grimace and look at people who say it's going to take all these months to come up with a vaccine. I think when we look back on this experience, what we'll discover is that you know, how many days, weeks was it before we sequenced the DNA of this virus? And we'll find out that we have made a major leap forward. Now, once we did that though, we then started saying as a collective group, okay, why haven't we fixed it? Why haven't we put it to bed? Why haven't we? So what it shows is that is that it reveals that humans have ever higher uh, raising expectations about what technology and science can do and how rapidly it can get us out of a jam, how rapidly it can get us through this thing. When they start talking about coming up with, you know, how to do the testing, well, they didn't know how to do the testing. It didn't show up until, you know, December, maybe it was earlier and the Chinese were trying to contain it. Don't know, don't, it doesn't matter. See, I mean, all the conspiracy theorists waste a lot of breath. Uh, there's a, there's just a, the way you can look at it is it's a lot of heat, not much light. The real question is, is how do you manage a crisis once a crisis takes place? Part of what I learned by doing turnarounds is that you're always managing a crisis and crises are tough to manage because you deal with people who get really kind of crazy and upset. So what it reveals about human nature is that frankly it will it will potentially infect your the way you view things also it makes people cynical because they say well why can't we fix this like right now this isn't like buying something from amazon and clicking the button and saying deliver it today and then having the little app tell us that they're only 10 stops away five stops away they're almost right around the corner no, some of this actually does take time and it's real science. So this will go through its process. The real key is, is that learn how you react and more importantly, how you don't overreact to situation and circumstance. Now, if you end up getting it, I hope none of, nobody is out there as part of our audience does, but if you get it, you know, follow the advice of the health professionals, do as much as you can. Most important thing is to know if you have a compromising factors ahead of time. So instead of rushing out to the, the Costco or the Sam's Club and buying every piece of toilet paper, seriously understand your situation. You know, what, what is your health profile? Uh, having having uh, helped medical clinics, I was shocked. I mean, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was shocked to see how many patients, again, this was you know, with patients, you know, concurrence, but how many patients were unaware of how compromised their situation was. Always understand what your situation is and that will help you. Okay, the next question I have, could COVID-19 dramatically derail any business? Well, some businesses are gonna really get, get hit pretty hard. Um, and then there's going to be some changes long-term that are going to happen. And one of the most important things to remember is that is that when these types of thing types of incidents happen, 9/11 was an example, the attacks on 9/11, is that those effects are still being felt 19 well we're not quite 19 years later. And why? Because well, it changed how we collectively did things. Well, this will change some of those things. Now, will those things be permanent? Or will they be temporary? And we, you know, can it derail a business? Well, you know, airlines could be in, under tremendous pressure. I mean, I've already heard that they're canceling flights. Um, last, as of last week, two hundred thousand flights had been canceled in China. I mean, that's a lot. By the way, any time an airplane is sitting, not carrying passengers, and just sitting in a hangar—actually, there's no hangar—but they're sitting on a runway and they have to block it up and everything. That is really expensive. It's crazy. I mean, they're, they're, you know, 
those airlines are bleeding money. So it can dramatically affect a variety of businesses. And in fact, there's going to be businesses that are affected that we won't even think about as we're sitting here today in a going forward motion that when we look back, we'll say, oh yeah, no, it affected that one. Oh yeah, no, it affected that one. And so it can dramatically affect a business. Now, just like I was talking about making sure that your health, you understand your health circumstance and situation, go through your business, go through what you do and say, how does what I, how, how does what I do to provide to my customer base and what my customers are doing and what's taking place in that customer base? I'll give you a crisis that, well, most people, we live through it, but here's an, an exact example. It's an engineering services company that I run uh, with, with a you know, client, now partner, and 2010, and we, and we have a, a pretty decent sized business. I mean, we're small. I mean, we're, we're like in the one to two and a half million dollar range. And in 2010, everything got moved to the right. Now that's a really nice way to say no business. Move to the right means, you know, instead of it happening in April, it happens in August, and then it happens in October. Well, that year, instead of doing, you know, close to a million to $2 million, two and a half million dollars, we did $36,000 in 2010. That is barely keep the lights on. Now, had we not set that business up to be very defensible, we would have gone out of business like lots of our competitors. But we had very, very low overhead. We structured the business so we could withstand those kinds of storms. Now, you may already be in the soup. You may already be there. And you can't change those things. But you can start looking at saying, what can I do right now to make sure that I make it through to the other side? And so it doesn't blow up my, my business. All right, next question. Okay. Uh, what happens if I'm so busy in my day-to-day -day that I'm not ready for a crisis? Henry Kissinger infamously said essentially that quote is, I, you know, I, I can't possibly have a crisis today. My schedule is already filled up. And what he was really talking about is the fact that, you know, crisis happened no matter what you or I want to believe. So my suggestion to every single one of you is that no matter how busy you are, is that you have to put in some planning time. You have to put in some things and think about what you should be doing so you can be in better shape. Now, I'm not advocating that you race out and buy every piece of you know, toilet paper you can buy and all of that. But what I am saying is that you should be prepared in your business and in your personal life as to what's going to take place. Sadly, most people do very little planning. They, in fact, have, you know, at most uh, enough rations, if you will, to make it through like a couple of days. So you have to ask yourself, you know, how do I step back from my day to day, step back from what's going on and what will I do and how will I put this together? Understand your family circumstance and situation. You may have people inside of your own family that are feeling lots of stress about this. Now, see, it's easy for somebody who doesn't feel stress that way to say, oh, yeah, yeah, minimize it. It doesn't. What you want to do is not, again, amplify it, but in fact, explain how this is, it is not going to be the end of the end. Now, it could get significantly worse. No one knows exactly where it's going to go. If I did, I would tell you I'd be, you know, placing huge bets on certain market sectors if you wanted to you know, get some kind of leverage off of that. But what I can say is, is make sure that you're thinking rationally and not in a panic state. Because if you're thinking in a panic state, you're, you're in trouble. On the other hand is if you're ignoring it and you're not doing any kind of preparatory work at all, well, now is the time to do it before things get to some other state. Now you can say, well, you know, but it'll be okay. I'll be, well, Take some time and do some planning, do some thinking, do some stuff that you need to do because that's very important. Now, how do you learn about how to know more about yourself and how to put yourself in a better position? 
Well, what I'm going to do is tell you right now, this is one of the motivations. It's one of the drivers. It's one of the reasons why I put together the book, which is coming out. Most businesses fail in the first five minutes. It just takes them three to five years to realize it. Position to win. Position to win talks about putting your business, your career, your life in a defensible position and understand how positioning works for you. The book is out in Kindle right now. You can go get it on Amazon. Dot com. You can also go to Barnes and Noble, go to Books a Million and get the, the digital side. Uh, you can go to our website, position to win book.com, position to win book.com. We have some freebies there. We have some other things there. But what I can tell you is that the, the book itself, the book launch that we're going to do, which will be a virtual launch, and you're all invited because we're going to do a special raging verbalist on the 17th of March, in which I'll, I'll reveal something about myself, which I've not revealed publicly, is that this may help you understand how to improve your business and put yourself in a more sure footing. At any rate, you want to understand how to position yourself at all times. Do that and you're going to be more successful. All right, we have time for just a couple more questions. So what, what's our next question? All right. What should I tell my customers, employees, and immediate circle uh, that I deal with about how we're going to handle COVID-19? This gets back to, so what is your travel policy? Are you going to limit that? Are you going to have work rules and some flexibility? Have you thought about how, if, you're, if your uh, team can't get together, what does that collaboration look like? How are those things coming together? Now, as far as telling your customers, because I have several businesses where you have customers, I have not had a single discussion with a customer in the last two weeks that the coronavirus COVID-19 has not come up. Now, some sadly are exploiting it as an excuse not to live up to their commitments. And what I assure every single customer is to the best of our ability, and the best of our capability is that we are there to support them, we are to deliver on our promises, and we are there to help them in any way, shape, or form. And offer that we will go that extra mile, that extra distance to help them go forward. Now, as far as employees, you're gonna probably have to think about, well, okay, what are you gonna really do? If you haven't already figured out technologically how to make things work better, then in, in most cases, you're, you're probably going to run into some issues and situations, but you've got to think about what is possible. What can you do to get things accomplished? And this isn't having everybody sitting in a bunker, making sandbags and you know canning peaches, but this is how do you maintain productivity when in fact you have this issue going on? You also need to think about how you're going to handle your vendors and your suppliers and those subcontractors that you have. My belief is that you should be as open and transparent with them. And again, write this down. If you're not doing anything dangerous, write this down. Do not be an amplifier. I'm not saying that you should sugarcoat anything. I'm not saying you should ignore anything, but make sure that you don't amplify the problem. What you want to do is be the calm in the storm and help people out. Do that and you'll see that you'll get a much better and uh, response, more success will come from it. And more importantly is that when this is done, people will see you as the person who really stepped up. And those are very important facts. Okay, what is our next, next, our next one? Uh, let's see, how to decide if you want to be an amplifier of a crisis or an attenuator of it. Now, I broke this out separately because I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that there are lots of people who get caught up in the, in the whirlwind, get caught up in the tornado. They get caught up in the, you know, wow, did you see this statistic and this statistic and this happened and that happened, and, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, and, and, and on all of those things. I mean, it is, it is a hard thing to comprehend for all of us. For all of us, it is a hard thing to comprehend that in Japan right now, they're playing baseball games in stadiums where there's no one in the stands and they're still playing the games because, you know, they, they need to play the games. And so now there's no audience there. It is hard to comprehend 
those types of changes that are taking place or the fact that, you know, uh, Facebook itself had an annual conference that they canceled completely or Apple pulled out of South by Southwest in Austin along with Google and Microsoft and other companies. All of those things can weigh heavily on you and turn you into an amplifier, a person saying, wow, this thing is going nuts. This thing is just taken off, you know, wow. You know, now my suggestion, if you so should take it is what we have to do is figure out how to not be the amplifier. Now, what does the attenuator mean? It means that when you get some information noted, learn how you can make this decision rationally and talk to people in tones that aren't on the edge of your chair and almost to panic. I mean, to watch how people have just gone way over the top, I think is a high negative. In a crisis, in a panic, it is better to try to be calm, remain aware, and go and help people. And if you do that, what you'll find out is that you're going to be that person that people go to and come to over the course of time. So I've got some announcements that I want to make and make sure everybody's aware of it. Um, for those of you are who are just tuning in for the first time or the next time, I would highly recommend that you go to the website position to win book.com. That's where we have started to collect material. Uh, and in fact, if you can think of questions, topics, things that you want to ask me about, I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, normally as a consultant uh, and, and what I do, I charge an awful lot of money, but here on Facebook every week, you get a little snippet here and a snippet there. Um, I really uh, aim and push to not, you know, not sit there and say, oh, by the way, yeah, I, I cover that in this course or do that. I answer questions and I answer them uh, directly. Also, since the book is coming out, I hope that you'll support it. Go to Amazon and pick it up, read it. Besides which, if you're not going to be traveling, you may have some extra time to do some reading. It's available in Kindle right now. It's available in EPUB and other places, Apple, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, and it will be available in physical and paperback in uh, on March the 17th. If in fact you want it autographed by myself, make sure that you go to positiontowinbook.com. You can order it there. No, there are no deals, but what you do is you get it autographed and we'll send it to you. And you know, there, there's some other cool things to do. I also want to remind every one of you, which is your success, all of our success is dependent upon how well we deal with our own internal conflicts, our own internal decision-making process. We project to the world that which we want to get. We project out to the world how much success needs to take place. Now, this isn't where you're sitting in a darkened room and saying, I want to be successful. What this is, is as you hold yourself in high esteem, as you walk through life, as you work through life, always be that person who's helping and moving these things forward. I've had people ask me for now decades about how to improve their positioning. One of the best things you can do is do the unexpected, something that nobody expects that you're going to do. And you say, wait a second, what's that? Whatever that is, maybe a little note, maybe a little help, maybe something. And even if you're not going to get a direct payoff at that exact point in time, every time you do one of those things, I believe you position yourself differently. You position yourself as more successful than not. If you keep doing that, what you'll find out is that the statement that I put in so many books, because I used to give away the book, Positioning the Battle for Your Mind, Fantastic book, changed my life. In fact, this is, I believe, the book that Gabe and I have put together is the modern version, but also goes in places that the guys, the boys, Al Reeves and Jack Trout didn't go. But every single time I would give somebody a book, I would write in it, 
my favorite inscription was, is position yourself as a winner. I hope that all of you do that. Go check it out. Hopefully this will be more successful. We will, I believe, make it through this circumstance, this crisis. Will things happen? I'm sure they will. But most importantly is that what you'll find is that if you keep your wits about you, you'll be more successful today. And on the other side, that success will continue. And with that, I wanna thank Sandra for coming and asking the questions. I wanna thank you who've submitted questions. I also wanna thank every person who has helped us along the way to get the book to where it is. And more importantly, all of you who spend some time watching me on Facebook Live. I'm John Paul Mendoza, Dr. Speed Selling. This has been The Raging Verbalist. And until next time, all I can say is think seriously about how you position yourself in this world to win. Thanks, everybody.